We have a pretty illustrious panel here. Um, I think if you all four of these people write about you, then you're going to have some pretty substantial coverage. And the idea is really to let you know how it works in music journalism, who you need to bribe, how you need to go about it, and also what various people will be looking for. Um, it does differ from one publication to another, so this is why I've tried to put something together that's a, a pretty broad cross-section of experience, styles and uh, writing. And I think perhaps the best thing to do is uh, start with Claire. If you just tell us a little bit about your your journalist background, Claire, and what you do now. Okay. Um, hello. I'm, I work at the list where I'm the music editor and prior to that I was a freelance journalist so I did that for about seven years um, and wrote for various papers and magazines including the list and then took a sort of office job with them where I've been for about two years. And what magazines or publications did you write for before you ended up at the list? Um, I wrote for the I wrote for some broadsheets like Sunday Times and Scotsman and The Herald and got into some uh, blogs as well, like online stuff like Amelia's Magazine where they wanted some sort of Scottish coverage. Um, gosh, I can't remember. Um, I went out to the States briefly as well and based myself in San Francisco and did some sort of... Um, writing for spin and sent stuff back to Scottish papers as well which was as tough as it sounds <laughs> well um, I'll maybe come back to that with the American side as well because it's always interesting to see how people can get written about outside um, outside Britain as well um, Gary tell us your story you were telling me earlier on that you were described as was a hairdresser turned journalist yeah by no Gallagher um, I was never a hairdresser um, yeah, I just started out, um, like many people, um, you know, as a freelancer and, you know, trying to get work with uh, different publications, um, Sunday Herald, The List, Scotsman, Evening News, and then, you know, eventually um, I took a full-time job at the Evening News, uh, which is where I am now, um, and the music editor of a magazine called The Guide, which is uh, every Thursday in the Evening News. And do you, you do other general features on music as well, don't you, news yeah. pieces? Yeah. It's not just music and band interviews and reviews, it's also film and theatre and comedy and stuff like that, but I specialise in music. Sue, what about yourself? Um, well, I've always been freelance, which is now more than 20 years. I'm still looking, well, I'm not actually looking for that <laughs> elusive full-time job. I think I've become largely unemployable. Um, but yeah, I mean, like um, I imagine, a lot of people started off fairly, fairly trial and error. Um, way, way back, did a bit of stuff for free, just for experience, and then sort of started off a long time ago, also at the list. Um, done a mix of art stuff over the years, theatre and book reviews and visual arts, um, like for a similar mix of publications to Gary, Scotsman, Sunday Herald, Scotland on Sunday, occasionally some of the the London broadsheets. Um, but it ended up specialising mostly in music, mostly at the kind of folk roots world end, which has become a very broad church, um, particularly in recent years. Um, but also get sent to, to review everything from jazz to opera. Um, but now mainly doing live stuff for the Scotsman, um, some magazines, some stuff for the Sunday Herald. What, you review opera as well? I have done in my time, um, always. Wow, what's that like? I mean, what kind of, th what, what makes an opera gig uh, one better than another? That's, I, I always go into that feeling very underqualified and, you know, make it, can make it clear when I get asked. I mean, they, they only ask me when the regular critic is off. Um, and it's just, it, you just have to go with your ears, you know, if, and, you, and, and not, pretend, not pretend to know more than you do. Um, you know, I, I don't attempt to write the kind of fine classical analysis that a classical music critic will do. I'll try and do it in more broad terms. And 
watch how the seemingly expert audience members are reacting and that kind of thing. I guess you <laughs> yours would be more intelligible then than the average. Well, obviously, uh, I'd like to journalist. Think so. Yes, um, Dave, do you do you ever do opera reviews? Um, I have done in the past, but again, like Sue, only on the basis that someone's asked me and no one else has been available. <laughs> this is amazing. You can know people for years and then you're sitting on a stage and find out all these uh, <laughs> these new sides to them, you it's dark tricky. horses. You. It's, it's uh, so who else do you write for, Dave? Um, pretty much everyone, really. Yeah, I noticed you wrote my, my sheet there, everyone. It kind of covers it. Um, I started about 10 years ago. I was... Uh, at Napier doing film and photography and I wrote for my um, student publication there and um, after a couple of months I sent some stuff off to the list and they liked it to uh, Claire's predecessor Mark his music editor he liked it gave me some work and uh, you get your first commission that's actually you know a few quid and you think well, you know I can go off elsewhere and, and you know have a bit of a sense of confidence about doing it so it just kind of built up I write at the moment for Sunday Mail, Scotsman Scotland on Sunday, The Independent, Mix Mag, The List. And I've written for uh, The Guardian, The Herald, uh, Sunday Times, other people, BBC, Channel 4, people like that. That's about it. Yeah. Okay, so I think you got a pretty broad church of uh, music journalists here. And I think probably the, the first question is, um, how do you choose what you cover? Because... Obviously, you'll be getting inundated with all sorts of different, um, different music, different artists. Um, Claire, I mean, what motivates your your decisions when you're choosing who to put in the list? Mm, hopefully, the bottom line is always, is it good music? Um, but there's also other factors like you try and find a hook, which would be. Is there a Scottish angle? Is there something that makes it newsworthy? Maybe it's a band that's been on the go for years, but they've decided to go in a different direction or they're doing something that makes it worth reading about and interesting. Um, uh, sort of dull detail, but necessary as well. Is, is it relevant? Is there like an event coming up that makes it worth covering? You know, there's quite a lot of people that get in touch and they have a band and they want to be covered, but it sounds really basic. But unless there's something to sort of tie it to, then it's it's not particularly newsworthy. So it, there needs to be a, it needs to justify its own mention, um, and then be good and interesting. And and do you um, do you have a, a lead time? Is there a good time for people to get in touch with you? Say if they're doing a, a launch or if they've got a are uh, CD that they want reviewed? Well, the list is four weekly, so we tend to work at least a month in advance. Um, and I guess that's worth paying attention to. It's, it's quite a tricky one because you don't want to get your information in so early that an editor will then have forgotten about it by the time your album comes out or your event happens. So I guess I would recommend that you contact them with a good lead in time and then maybe chase them up again and just give them a wee prod near near the date and just check that they've got your details but it's not going to do anyone any favours if you sort of say we're playing tomorrow night can you give us a preview because it, it just looks like you don't you don't know how the magazine works my name is Claire Soares and I am music editor at the List magazine okay Claire this is your first born to be wide experience how was it for you it was fine, it was quite pain free. <laughs> Is there, was there something that you found particularly memorable or surprising about the, the panel itself? I guess it's quite interesting to hear other uh, journalists or people in the music industry to hear it from their perspective as well and um, that they also have preferences about how they're approached by artists or the kind of things they're looking for in an artist biog or from a press release it's, and we were I thought we were all saying roughly similar things so that was quite reassuring to hear. And if you could tell musicians one thing about music journalists one piece of advice what would that be? Um, I guess it's 
it's such a personal thing, like your taste in music is, is very personal and just persevere because you might have sent your demo or your your CD or your single out to loads of journalists and you've not had much luck but it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, it just it means that you've not found someone whose tastes coincide with what you're doing. So I would say just kind of keep going and try not to be too disheartened if you're getting really bad reviews. Um, unless your music's rubbish, of course, in that case, maybe take it on board, but um, yeah, there's not really a right or wrong answer in, in music journalism often. It's just someone's opinion and 